welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're carrying on from the last one where we're looking at some paint panel options. Now I want to get rid of what's in here at the moment so I can go to my timeline, choose my layer, choose effects and just hit delete and it's gone. Everything that was in there has now gone. Now there are options down here for duration. At the moment we're at constant so if I draw a line and I take my current time indicator and go all the way along my timeline, stretch my timeline out to the full five seconds, you'll see that it's there constantly. So whatever I have drawn will remain all the way through. However, if I take it to the next one down, which is right on, and I take my current time indicator to the beginning, I'm actually going to write on something. So as soon as I start to click, a timer works in After Effects, remembering how long I take to do what I do. So I'm going to go like this, and let go, and it seems to disappear. But notice down here this grey circular keyframe. So if I hit my spacebar to play, you'll see that I've drawn on or I've written on. And we're going to have a look at some of the options down here a bit later on. Notice also that we've got some other options. I'm just going to change my colour so that we can see when I do something different. Take it to a magenta so it's very obvious and I'm just going to take my mode to normal. And you'll see that when you go from right on you can go down to a single frame. And when I click single frame and I draw on something, so if I do page down, it's gone. It's there literally for a single frame. So single frame can be used for getting rid of things. So I might actually have said, you know what, I need to use my alpha channel and I can get rid of something just on that frame. And so now it's gone just for that frame, page up, page down. Simply one frame, it's there and then it's not there again. So that's really useful for a single frame, but what if you've got a complete range of frames you need to deal with? Then you can go down to custom and you'll see here that you've got a yellow one and you can take it up. So let's say I want something to last for 10 frames and I've got something that I need to get rid of for 10 frames so I can click and say that's an area that I want to get rid of for 10 frames. And so if I then do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, gone. So it's simply being able to set up a specific range where you want your paint to apply for a specific period of time by using this custom option. Now let's just click back to right on very briefly and look at the effects in the actual timeline here. And I'm just going to open up effects and you'll see that each one of my brushes has come in as an effect. So if we look at brush one, which was this one that we did at the top, you can open it up and you'll see that I've got a path. If I click on there, look, there's the path. And if I go to my selection tool, select that path, I can actually click on that path and move it around. So I'm physically moving my path around. So I'd drawn something that was correct, but it was in slightly the wrong place. Well, guess what? I can physically shift it. Also, I've got stroke options. Now, we're going to get into these in more detail in the next tutorial, but let's just show you that you can make it shorter or longer from the beginning or the end. And you can turn around and say, you know what? I've got it absolutely right, but the wrong color. Well, I can even go in and start to change the color. Bear in mind, this has got a, a mode applied. So as you can see, there's an awful lot that you can do in the timeline. I can even go back and say, you know what, I don't want that overlay mode. Change the mode. And we're going to have a little bit more of a look at the timeline in the next one. But notice this one, brush 2, is the one with right on. And if I open that up and I open up its stroke options, you'll see that actually what has happened is simply the end has been animated. So we've got the end going from 0 to 100% over this period of time. And if it's too slow or it's too fast, guess what? Take the last keyframe and make it quicker, or take the last keyframe and make it a lot slower. So you can actually play with your timing after the event. So in the next tutorial, we'll have a little bit closer look at what we can do in the timeline and go over some of the other options as to what we can do to make our write-on look even better by using paths from other places. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.